after I finish teaching class sometimes when I'm at the college, I go and I'll have dinner, you know, at, a, at some places near the school. And once in a while, there'll be somebody about a block away, they set up a speaker, like a loudspeaker, and they have a microphone and they're, in their mind, I suppose they, they think they're, they're preaching the gospel, but they're really just screaming. And this happens every couple of weeks, I'll notice these people, and I think they get permits from the city and everything, so it's not like they're doing something illegal, but they're there, and I'm a priest and I'm just you know, enjoying a hamburger, and over a block away, it's too loud for me, and it's bothering me, and they're really harsh. And I don't understand what they're saying because they're preaching in Spanish. So I can't judge whether they're saying something true or not, but I'm just listening to it, and it's just so, and there's, it's just in front of a road and there's cars driving by. And never once, I've seen it maybe 20, 30 times, never once have I seen somebody pull their car over, screeching and stop and run and say, I want to know more. All I've ever heard was people saying, gosh, those people are so annoying. They're just ruining people's day. I've seen, I remember, you know, when there's like big crowded events, like, you know, uh, during Comic-Con, I'll go downtown. And I'll see, you know, Comic-Con's fun to go downtown or whatever, and it's fun, and people are dressed up all weird or whatever. So it's interesting. And there's always like one guy or a couple of people that are holding up a sign saying, here's all the things, every, everybody who's like this is going to go to hell. Similar to these guys that are just kind of screaming on, on, the, uh, on the street. And you, and you look at that list and like, okay, some of them, they really are sins. And then some of them are like, if you watch sports too much, and if you're like too into food, and we're like, man, you're just making up new sins too. And what are you doing there? You think you're going to stand there and just be like a total jerk. And you're going to cause conversion in somebody. I've never once in my life heard of anybody actually repenting when they interact with somebody who's doing that. And I can tell you why. Because Jesus didn't do that. It says here in the Bible, in the Gospel, it says, he's quoting Isaiah. And Matthew was quoting Isaiah, talking about Jesus. He will not wrangle or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. Matthew is saying, Jesus is not one of these street preachers. And sometimes people think they're better than Jesus or they know better than he does. He will, and it says, he will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick. I love this phrase. Let's understand what this means. A bruised reed, it's like a tall piece of grass. And sometimes the stalk on the piece of grass is kind of broken and it's kind of like tipping over. And all it takes is just somebody accidentally breathing on that thing. And it'll break. A smoldering wick is like a, a little candle, a flame of a candle, that's about to go out, but it's just kind of barely flickering. And Isaiah is saying about the Christ, he's so gentle that that little candle flame that's about to go out, he wouldn't even want that, want that to go out. He would nourish that just so it grows a little bit. That little piece of grass that's about to break, he's so gentle that he wouldn't even break that. And in his name, the Gentiles will hope. The Messiah is somebody who gives hope to people, not somebody who just goes, step one, let me just announce to everybody, let me tell you all why you're all going to hell. Because God made me your judge. Jesus is the judge, and he doesn't do that. Much less some like dude standing on the corner of a street. He's not anybody's judge. And Christ is truly the judge, and he doesn't act that way. Go back to the beginning of the gospel. They're going through the grain fields, and it happens to be the Sabbath, and his disciples did such an innocent thing. They were hungry, so you know the stalk of grass, at the top of that grass there's like something that's edible, top of the wheat grass. You know what they did? They just picked it up and they just went like this on their hand, and they pulled out the part that was edible. That's all they did. Very innocent thing. And the Pharisees said, you guys are breaking the law of God. Why? Because, you know why? Because when they did this, oh, you're working on the Sabbath. Because they did this. And that's exactly what happened in the gospel. Today. The Pharisees care so much about right and wrong, and it's a very good thing to care about right and wrong. 
but they care about it so much that they did something wrong. It's, it's very, very easy for us. It's, it's all over the gospel. Examples of people that are so concerned about sin that they commit sins doing it. I will be the, there's nobody who's going to be like more strict than I am when it comes to telling you. If somebody comes, is this a sin? Absolutely, that's a sin. But why is it a sin? The Son of Man, it says, is the Lord of the Sabbath. At another place, Jesus says, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. It's so tempting for us as religious people to think God created us to follow his rules. But that is absolutely backwards and upside down. God wrote the rules for us. The rules are not just these arbitrary things that we have to obey them because God's the boss. And if we don't, then he's going to dock our pay or he's going to punish us. That's not the way it works. They're not arbitrary at all. God's commandments are, are exactly like you who are parents, a dad or a mom, telling the kids, don't go that close to the fire. Don't touch the stove. Oh, you're so unfair. Why can't I touch the stove? That's what, it, that's what God's commandments are. All of them. Everything that's a sin is a sin because it's going to hurt us. And maybe the fire is going to look shiny and bright and, oh, it's cool, I want to touch that. But it's going to burn you. Maybe, like, I don't know, maybe the Twinkie. Are there still Twinkies? I know they, they went out of business and then somebody else bought them. Maybe Twinkies are going to look good, but if you eat them all the time, yeah, they're going to taste good and then you're going to you're going to die very quickly if that's all you eat. So when somebody says, when your mom says, you can't just have dessert for dinner every day. It's not because she's mean. It's because she knows it's going to hurt you in the long run. When God says, do not commit adultery, don't even look at somebody with lust in your heart. When he says, when God says, do not kill, don't even be angry with somebody in your heart. It's not because he's mean. When Jesus says, you'll be judged for every idle word you utter. It's not because he doesn't want us to have fun. It's because he knows those actions are going to harm us. And I get the feeling sometimes when I interact with the street preacher kind of people. I don't know, it's almost like they're jealous that they can't do the stuff that they used to do. And they wish they could, and they kind of resent the people that are still doing it. You want to see how backwards their understanding is? When I see somebody who's committing a sin, my reaction shouldn't be anger. I should feel so sorry for that person. I definitely shouldn't feel jealous that they're getting away with something that I can't get away with. When I see somebody doing something that God has commanded not to do, I should feel compassion for that person because they're destroying themselves. Not the, and I shouldn't like, and then sometimes we even get mad at, oh God, why do you allow these people to do these bad things? You know, you only say that because you want to do them too. And you only want to do them because you don't understand why God is commanding, them, commanding you not to do them. So certainly don't get the impression that I'm saying the commandments are not a big deal. I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying they're a much bigger deal than you think. But that's what they're for. And sometimes... God will command something, you know, to be done or not to be done to protect us, to keep us healthy, to keep us safe. We, this is where we become, we cross the line and we become sinners in applying God's law. We take God's law and we make it so much more complicated than he wants it to be. God commanded us to rest on the Sabbath because he doesn't want us to work all the time. Because too much work is unhealthy for us. And so he wants us to rest. Because rest is a healthy, good thing for a human being. That's why God commanded it. God commanded us to worship Him on the Sabbath, not because He gets something out of our worship, but because it's good for us to worship Him. And it's, it's poisonous for us to not worship Him. But when we make it that, oh, technically you're doing this and you're technically working, 
that's more burdensome, that's more, it's more work to live like that than to just work. And we're taking God's commands that are meant to be freeing and healing, and we're making them more of a burden than God ever wanted them to be. And I can go through a list of 50 things that I've heard people say are a sin, they're not a sin at all. And people are worried about all this weird stuff. Every couple of years, there's people who come up with new things that are bad. And that same person five minutes later is going to go and gossip in the most malicious way about everybody they've ever met. Worry about the things that are actually sins. And, and spend the effort on that rather than inventing new stuff for people to worry about that they don't, that are just irrelevant, like going like this and eating. So brothers and sisters, the line that Christ quotes from the Bible is, is the one that I think we need to be kind of meditating on today. If, if he says to the Pharisees, if you understood what this means, what I want, God desires mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. So brothers and sisters, do our best to be guiltless in ourselves, but also to, to pray for those who are harming themselves by breaking the law of God so that they can return and, and be healed and be happy in Him.